maybe just give our audience a little bit of a sense of how political speech and political activity is protected right now, or indeed is not protected? Can an employer fire an employee for political speech right now? Well, this is the big problem. Political speech is not something that's protected by the um, Human Rights Act of Canada, which any federally regulated company or employer would be required to comply with. And it's not protected by the Ontario Human Rights Code. Um, and I think most, uh, I looked at this recently, but most uh, provincial human rights codes don't protect political expression. Um, what that means is that someone could be fired for espousing views that um, are politically unattractive to their employer, um, and they don't really have um, protection. Um, they essentially, because we you have this vacuum in the law, it allows employers to discriminate against people who they employ um, over political expression, and um, there is a big problem with that because we're seeing it happen a lot. I mean, we all remember like during you know, the convoy um, protests and, you know, I'm not, I'm not providing an opinion as to whether those protests were good or bad, but what we saw a lot of was people being fired um, or disciplined because their names had appeared on a donation list that was, right. you know, legally leaked um, by the media. And, you know, that's, that's a big problem. So, uh, I'll, I'll put it this way, a little bit of devil's advocate here, but, you know, uh, I guess I'm wondering what your sense is of whether there is, an, a, is a balance or whether there's an, an absolute right in this case. But, you know, accountability uh, to, uh, as a corporate leader, uh, to your stakeholders uh, versus an individual's political rights. Is there a balance there or are those political rights absolute rights? What I tell employees who come to consult with me or employers who I'm working with is that, um, you know, if they have an employee who has a Twitter account or a public facing social media account and they actually, you know, identify in their social media as being, you know, vice president of X corporation um, and then they're out there like, you know, tweeting away um, all kinds of things. The employer does have a right to, you know, monitor their social media and have policies in place um, that, you know, require that that individual, you know, not say or do things that would cause the company to be embarrassed. Um, and, you know, that that's fair. Um, you know, that's something that's public and the employees making a decision to like have their, you know, the company brand out there front and center um, where there is a big problem is when employees are um, attacked or disciplined for things that they, you know, for expressing a political um, belief, whether it's through like volunteering, donating, um, you know, participating in a meeting um, that has nothing to do with their job and no way identifies with their job. They're doing it solely as a private citizen, as is their right, and they get disciplined for that. And I'm not talking about someone going to um, you know, a really offensive rally, you know, someone participating, you know, there's, there's a line, obviously, you know, someone who's participating in, um, you know, a, you know, a hateful mo movement, we all kind of know where that line is. I'm talking about like, you know, someone um, being disciplined for going to a Conservative Party of Canada um, fundraiser, because I've seen that um, before, you know, mm -hmm. you know, it's a, it's a problem. Yeah, and a uh, good point uh, that it's, what we don't we don't know where the, if there is a line we don't know when it is applied and when it isn't applied and uh, uh, one person's perfectly legitimate participation in the, in the political destiny of of this nation could be offensive to someone and and grounds for discipline is that's basically what you're saying yeah exactly um, you know you see a lot of these days like companies and professional regulators who are trying to um, express like a, an ideology, which is a new thing. Like we didn't really see this, you know, in the eighties or the nineties or the early two thousands. Um, one of the items that we cover, I covered in my article was, um, of course, the law society of Ontario has their, um, you know, their different, you know, their statement of principles, which ended up being quite controversial. Um, and so you're seeing these 
organizations that regulate professionals and, and companies just coming out with like statement, like mission statements that don't really have anything to do with the work they're doing or the product they're selling or the service they're providing. And, um, you know, they don't explicitly tell, right. you know, Always like, oh, you have to sign on, but like you kind of do. Yeah. We're uh, speaking of product selling. We're going to take a brief commercial break uh, with our guests, but we'll be back. Mm -hmm.